Welcome to math115.com, another webinar. Today we're going to be working on summation notation. We'll go through the properties, then we will go through a few problems, and then we'll try one really, really hard problem. This is Matt, <laughs> and I... am forgot my name there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I only knew you for a few years. And <laughs> I'm a future student. Sorry the summation notation is a little late. I know you guys did a while ago, but that's fine. Yep, at least we're catching up. Yeah. We've been busy. Yeah. So, take it away. All right, here we go. So first thing we need to do, we need to learn the basic properties of summation notation. And I'll explain kind of what summation notation is supposed to mean. So, rule number one. If you have some summation, so this is your summation symbol, and I'm just gonna pick the variable i, so i equals one to, mm, let's just say n, it doesn't matter what the top is. <clears throat> and this is a, and you have uh, another summation that says uh, this, plus or minus summation i equals 1 and b. So this is something you might typically see. You might see uh, summation with the same uh, bottom and same top, but two separate summations. Well, the first property says that you can combine these together. So Looking at this, i equals 1, and a plus b, uh, or minus, sorry. Um, so, oh, wait, no, summation goes away. So, this right here, this whole line, is the same thing as this line right here. So, in other words, what it's saying is that you can combine two summations, plus or minus, as long as this, uh, the, dot, the, the beginning point and the end point are the same for both summations. So, just plus or minus can bring them together into one summation. And the same is true vice versa. If you have this, that means you can go this way as well. So, property number two. So, property number two is going to be a similar concept as this one here. So, let's say you have another summation. We'll do the same range, i equals 1 to n. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put an r here times some uh, constant c. So, this is a constant number. This is going to be some number like 1, 10, a million, whatever it is. And this is going to be some, uh, some, some other number that's multiplying this. So, what you can do with this is this right here. This whole thing is equal to r summation i equals 1 to n c. So, all I did was pull the r out and put it in front of the summation. So, that goes here, just like this. And then you're left with just the constant inside. Um, so again, you can do this vice versa. If you wanted to bring this back in, you could do that. So they work both ways. Uh, rule number three is going to look similar to rule number one. However, this time, instead of manipulating the inside, what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate oh, the indices. Okay, so uh, let's go with uh, i equals 1, 2, n. And I'm just going to put in a here for now. So. This is um, your base, but let's say, rather than dealing with this whole thing, you wanted to break it up into two summations. Well, what you can do is you can make this equal to i equals 1 to m, notice this is m, not n, of a, plus uh, i equals m plus 1 to n. So what I did was I didn't mess with this at all. So this stays here, and then there will be, it. sorry, another A right here. But what I did was I, fit, I messed with this right here, the indice. So rather than going 1 to N, what I did was I went to 1 to M, where M is some number in between 1 and N, so 1 to M, and then I went from M plus 1, so M, one thing above M, all the way to N. So basically, instead of going straight from 1 to N, I broke it up into two pathways. Went from 1 to m, and then m plus 1 to n to get to the end. So here to here should be the end point, but here to here and here to here are two halves in between. So the last rule has to do with um, manipulating both the indices and the inside. So here's how that works. Let's say you have the same situation, i equals 1 to n. And I'm just going to put an a right here. Uh, a times uh, i, right there. So i is our variable in this case. So i is the variable, a is just some constant, and n is our endpoint. So now what I wanted to do was, let's say I wanted to re-index. This is something you've probably gone over in class. 
Let's say instead of going 1 to n, I wanted to subtract 1. So I would go 0 to n minus 1. So I wanted to remove 1 from this whole uh, pathway. Well, what you can do is it would have to look like this. So let's say i equals 0 because you're subtracting 1. Subtracting 1. And therefore you have to subtract 1 from up here too. So instead of n, you now have n minus 1. And what you have to do here is wherever you see a variable in the original part, right here, wherever you see a variable, if you subtract here, you have to add to the variable here. So this now becomes a, open parentheses, i plus 1. Since we subtracted 1 here from the, uh, the indexes, uh, we have to add 1 to the actual inside portion of this summation. So remember, it's important to have the parentheses because you're adding one to the variable. You're not adding one to the, to the multiplication of a times i. So what you have to do is you have to do a times i and then a times one as well and add those two answers together. So it's very important to know your order of operations when you're doing this. Okay, so now you know the four different properties. Maybe it sounds a little hazy right now, but let's try some example problems and then we'll see kind of like how we apply these rules.